To my raw review, Washington DC edition. There's some thoughts I have on the WWE Network and WrestleMania, and I'm going to be doing a debate of the beak on it. I'm also going to throw a couple of other things along with it. So watch out for that after this review. It should be up maybe the same day or the next day. Now let's see about Raw. Was it a good Raw? It wasn't a bad Raw. But they're I just get this feeling from WWE that they're very, very nervous about this, about this WrestleMania. They are. Because they were trying to put everything they could into this Raw to make it as appealing and as interesting as possible. Opening up the show with Undertaker and Brock Lesnar. I was actually very happy to see The Undertaker open the show. It wasn't Triple H. It wasn't Daniel Bryan. It wasn't Randy Orton. It wasn't Batista. And Stephanie, even though she has very nice boobies that bounce, and I'll be talking about that later. It was good to see Undertaker and Brock Lesnar open the show. Now, I kind of wish that they were the main event of WrestleMania because I believe that every WrestleMania The Taker has done has always been five star and it should have been the end of the show and they never do it. I wish they would do it this time around but I doubt it. But seeing this was very good. Paul Heyman talked very well. The Undertaker just looked very good even though he almost fell a little bit getting into the ring because of his cloak. You can look past that. It's a long cloak. <laughs> but in the end seeing Brock Lesnar beat the crap out of the Undertaker and F5 him really hypes it up for me personally. You got to tell me below what you believe. Was that necessary or not? Because honestly, a good feud, even if it's a short one, you need some level of talking, but then at least once or twice before the end of the feud or the climax of how the feud is going to be, maybe it may last a little longer, you need to have a short fight. And it has to be done properly. And I believe this time it was done well. So now the first match of the night, Summer Rae versus Natalya. Now the reason I'm bringing this up first, and I don't usually do the first match of the show, is because of Total Divas, and that's the reason why it's done. And I wish to say this about Naomi. My baby, I love my baby. I do love Trinity McCoy. Well, Trinity Fatu, if I'm pronouncing the name properly. I did get a chance to see Total Divas. I'm not a big Total Divas fan, I'm not. The only reason I look at it is for Naomi and Natalia. If Cameron's talked about, I care about Cameron. I don't really care about Eva Marie. I don't care about the Bellas. I don't care. Those are generally the three people I care about in Total Divas. But seeing my Naomi on a bus with her man getting freaky, I really do care about Naomi. I want to see her and a new husband, which she is truly married to Jonathan Fatou. I want to see them happy. I want to see them actually succeed in the business and have a good marriage that doesn't come apart. And I know what it's like to have a marriage that doesn't work because I had one. But seeing her getting jiggy in the bus with Jonathan running into the back with her boobies shaking and her butt wiggling it upset me on one ex one part and excited me in the other because I'm going like oh I get to see those boobs bounce and she looks so damn good she must look sexy naked and then the other part is saying oh my no what are you doing you're supposed to be look no one says you're clean like an angel Trinity you're not clean You've done your business. You've been a dirty, dirty girl, but come on. This is international and national television. He's going to be seen internationally and nationally, and I didn't want to see that happen to you. I didn't want to see that you and Jonathan have that type of situation where, essentially, if this is a work shoot or an actual shoot, that's going to stick with you for a very long time. I don't want to see that. <laughs> But a part of me is going, oh, damn, she looks so good. So I was out of conflict. I'm sorry. Sorry to kind of go off train. But the match between Summer and Natalia actually was a very good match. It was decently technical. The crowd actually liked it. In the end, Summer Rae won. But what does this mean? Does this continue to feud? Of course it does. 
It'll lead into the, um, what is it, AJ Lee or, or is it the Vicky? I can't remember which one. I think it's the AJ Lee WrestleMania Invitational. But the point of this is what I believe. That this is not going to end their feud. It may escalate it after WrestleMania. It's a possibility that these two women may get themselves a pay-per-view moment in the next pay-per-view. That could be over the limit, I believe. That's the next pay-per-view. I can't be sure. But you get my point. Now, the eight-man tag with Usos. And calm, this is the fourth video recording. And this is the fourth video recording. This is the part I kept watching. I said it. I'm going to say it again as calmly as possible. When the Usos won those belts on Raw, I knew they weren't going to get a WrestleMania moment. I was hoping they would. I was begging that they would. But the motherfuckers at WWE believe that everything else is way more important than your tag champs that people who literally... Ooh! Ooh! Ow! Can't do that. And actually like it are relegated to the pre-show. They're relegated to it. And that is the most stupidest thing I've ever seen. They're willing to put two hours out before WrestleMania. Two. Why not add an extra hour to WrestleMania? Make it a four hour thing. You might as well. Because this is just adding an extra hour to something that's stupid. The Usos should not have to defend their tag belts on a kickoff show. It doesn't matter if it's on the network or on YouTube. It makes no difference. Seeing that the Los Matadores cheated to win doesn't mean they're going to turn heel. If they were going to turn heel, it would have happened already. They would have done it on the SmackDown or they would have presented it more on Raw, which they haven't. So I'm not even worried about it. But the Usos deserve better. And I'll probably be talking about it during the... <sighs> during my WrestleMania review, I'm sure I'm going to be angry about it. But let's move on. Fandango and Damien Sandauer versus the Rhodes Brothers. Now, I had a problem with this match because only one guy, one got his theme music played. And that's Fandango. Now, Fandango boxed two weeks ago working with Gold Dust. He did not do a good job. He cut the guy's head open a little bit and pissed his ass off. So either that was unintentional or intentional, but the guy does not get pinned. It's Damien who gets pinned by gold dust. And Fandango didn't really do a lot of work here. He looked good, but Damien is the one who got nailed the most. So what does this mean? I'm not sure. Does this mean they're going to push a Fandango again? I don't know. Johnny Curtis is not a bad talent. But the thing about this is that with Goldust getting pissed the way he did, the question is going to be, are they going to continue a feud between them? I don't know. But I'm interested to find out. Now, the... Might as well get it over with right now. AJ versus Naomi. Lumberjill match. One exception in this entire situation, which is understood. They wanted to present everyone there, Total Divas and Regular Divas. They want to let everyone be seen so when the actual match happens at WrestleMania, we'll know who we're dealing with. But there's one person there that just doesn't look right. And I'm going to say this. And I have no bias against her. When you look at Rosa Mendez, good looking woman. She has a nice body. She has a beautiful face. I've always said, I said this last year and I'll keep saying this. Rosa Mendez is a beautiful woman, but she's not a sexy woman. And they thought to make her sexy, they blonde her out. And I'm sorry, Rosa Mendez does not look better as a blonde. She actually looks very wrong as a blonde. Her skin is way too light to be a blonde like that. Her facial features doesn't look right as a blonde. If she had been stayed a brunette, or better yet, make her redhead. Why not have her redhead like Eva Marie? Eva Marie, she may not carry redhead great, but she does carry it pretty damn well. 
They should have made Rosa Mendez a redhead. To be honest, she would look better as one. She just doesn't look right. You guys tell me below if I'm wrong, and I'm being a little picky about this, but I'm being honest. The match itself really wasn't a great match, but it wasn't meant to be. I think they're trying to protect a little bit of Naomi. She just took the, the, the eye patched off because of the broken, what is it, um, broken oval in her eye. I think they were being very, as gentle as possible with her because they don't want to re-injure her before WrestleMania. But they did let her get the win. And that is the most important thing. And as I've always said, and I probably will talk about this in my debate of the week, Naomi is one of those sleeper movies that you think isn't going to be anything, but it blows you away. So that's all I'm going to talk about. Now, Kane versus Roland Reigns. Was not bad at all. But I can say this. Seeing that the New Age Outlaws have turned corporate along with Kane, it's understood. They need something to be done with the Shield. Now, I understand last SmackDown, they got their asses handed to them. The Shields got beat. But they need to give the Shield a credible feud to solidify them as faces. I still say this. I'm going to be honest. I am happy that Kane is trying to help a younger talent. Just like the New Age Outlaws helped the Usos, Kane is helping Roland Reigns. This gave him mad cred. Of course, Roland Reigns didn't win. It was Kane, but it's not the point. The point is that they're trying to solidify their shield as faces. Roland Reigns was put over very well by Kane. The New Age Outlaws were putting over Seth and Dean very well. So this is what we got. And this leads into the match at WrestleMania. Three on three, corporate versus the Shield. Is it going to be a good match? I'm not sure, but it could be. But I'm still upset that Kane is still in this position. He needs to get out of it. I think his time has come. That's just me. Now, hmm. The Triple H segment with his wife, Steph. And then the add-ons of... Batista and Orton. Was it a good segment? I'm calling and I'm stating this. Triple H is the master, the spin master, because he knows how to spin things so well to make it sound good. Of course, he has off moments. He can. But he spoke very well. The vid package of everyone else including a one who shall not be named was even included in the vid package. They had no choice because they needed it. Steph's voice in the background was good. She did a very good voiceover. In the end, this entire segment until Batista and Orton came out was very good. Batista, I've said this already, Batista just doesn't feel right to me. I really believe he should have added a little bit of his own real life character as an actual MMA fighter into his character. He just doesn't feel right. And this segment, which wasn't too bad for him, just wasn't good enough. Orton actually was very good. Shockingly enough that he has his monotone voice, this is what I think of you. Yes, his monotone voice sometimes just is annoying as fuck. But you know what? This is one of the better Orton promos I've seen in quite a while. He actually did pretty good here. He did. So I gotta give it to him. In the end, we get a no DQ match after the game basically told everybody, I can do whatever the fuck I want. I'm gonna say what I want, and you guys are gonna have your match. No DQ. So I'm moving on to that match. Oh, was this a good match? What happened afterward was it good? The Spin Master did a great job. He made sure that Orton was evil by trying to bring out the viper in him. He tried to bring the beast out in Batista saying, come on, come on, Davy, come on, show me the beast. Show me, there you go. Very well done. And in the end, after everything was done in the ring with these two, with a Daniel Bryan jumping over the retaining wall and started beating his ass up, he also made himself a great spin master of showing how vulnerable he is by getting his ass handed to him and getting caned. 
Now, I wish to say one more thing before I finish that part. Stephanie's boobs bouncing up and down was epic. I'm sorry. Her boobies looked... I don't know if she was wearing a real bra. Maybe she was wearing a bra and if she needs to wear one of those sport bras that need to hold those monsters in place. But those... Bring my language. Those titties of hers were bouncing around like they were unhinged. Like there was nothing holding them. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm sorry. But in the end, Daniel Bryan was holding his head up high because he got the better of them. And this actually leads into a good build into WrestleMania. I actually enjoyed this build. Now, I understand that last week it was not that good. I didn't say it was bad. But I never talked about all the bad things in my impact review, that short speak. It wasn't very great. It was kind of a clusterfuck. But this one wasn't that bad. The ending of the show was actually pretty good. And I did enjoy it. Now, the last two things I'm going to talk about is the Wyatts and Cena and Piper's Pit. I think I'll talk about Cena and Bray first. Bray is Bray. He does a good job in his... He cuts great promos. Now, not saying that Cena this time around, after the confrontation in the ring, didn't cut a great promo. He did. Cena's always sometimes a big hit or big miss. This was a pretty good hit he did. It was. But I think he shined at least good enough after the match between Bray and the Sacrificial our truth that makes you really think that Bray's in his head because it doesn't matter that he beat the crap out of Luke and Eric it wasn't the point the point is he had to stoop to the level of the Wyatts to get dressed up and wear a goat's mask to beat the shit out of them and to throw them off that is why I believe he shined enough that it's not that he's gonna turn dark he's never gonna turn dark but still, in the end, by him going there, it still, at least to me, it still iterates, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, that Bray's in his head and he's willing to do anything to get him. So I'm alright with that. But like I said, make this feud not too long, WWE. If you do, you're going to ruin Bray Wyatt and the Wyatts. I'm sorry. Finally, Piper's Pit. A preview of the... Oh. oh, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. It was just one big clusterfuck. I'm sorry. To be honest, I would have liked a smaller segment. I wouldn't have liked to see that if it was only those four who first came out and it was the men who came out first. If they only kept it to four guys, I really believe it would have been better. And then bring the big show out. But by almost everybody and the mom come to the ring and then Big Show comes out. And it wasn't all of them. But it was most of them. I just, it's not that they're telegraphing it. It just believes, it, I just believe it was a little bit too much. It felt like a clusterfuck. It could have been a lot lighter. You could have had just the Hulk, the uh, the Big Show come in and beat four of those guys. And it would have been still just as effective. But I just feel like it was a little too much. I enjoy Piper. And I really believe, you know what this is, I believe? I think I'll put this in my debate of the week. Piper and Sheamus. They will make a great couple. But I'm going to leave it at that. How do I feel about this show? Uh, like I said earlier, if I didn't say it, the WWE is really pushing very hard to try and get this done. But I believe they're pushing it not because they're worried about a payout for WrestleMania like they usually will get. They're worried about what's going to happen after that with their network. And I will be covering that in my debate of the week. And I hope you enjoyed the Zane view. Please give me a comment below what you believe. And I'll be getting that, data, the, <laughs> that debate of the week out as soon as possible. Peace up.